In traditional physics, space-time is treated as a smooth, continuous fabric. But what if I told you that at the quantum level, space-time might not be so smooth? Enter quantum space-time, where certain variables that usually commute do not, forming a different Lie algebra. This means some variables might actually be discrete rather than continuous. The idea of quantum space-time originated in the early days of quantum theory. Heisenberg and Ivanenko first proposed it to eliminate infinities from quantum field theory. Later it was passed down to Rudolf Peierls and Robert Oppenheimer, and finally to Hartland Snyder, who published the first concrete example. Snyder's work was simplified by C. N. Yang the same year. So what does this mean for physical space-time? In quantum mechanics, position and momentum variables are already non-commutative and abide by the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. This means greater energy is needed to probe smaller distances. But here's the kicker. At extremely small scales, like the Planck scale, these probing particles could form black holes, essentially destroying what they were meant to measure. This suggests that our usual picture of space-time breaks down at these tiny scales. Why is this significant? Well, physical coordinates, like those used in astronomy, are slightly non-commutative due to gravitational fields. For instance, the coordinates of a star are modified by the gravitational fields between us and the star, like the deflection of light by the sun. According to quantum theories of gravity, these field variables do not commute so the coordinates that depend on them likely do not either. Both arguments, based purely on gravity and quantum theory, limit the measurement of time by the Planck time. However, our instruments are made of particles, which may set an even larger limit. Now let's delve deeper into the mathematical frameworks that describe quantum spacetime. Quantum spacetimes are often mathematically described using the non-commutative geometry of conus, quantum geometry, or quantum groups. But what does this mean? Essentially, any non-commutative algebra with at least four generators could be interpreted as a quantum spacetime. However, certain desiderata have been suggested to make these interpretations more robust and physically meaningful. Firstly, local Lorentz group and Poincaré group symmetries should be retained, albeit in a generalized form. These generalizations often take the form of a quantum group acting on the quantum spacetime algebra. So, why is this important? This algebra might plausibly arise in an effective description of quantum gravity effects within some regime of that theory. For example, a physical parameter, perhaps the Planck length, might control the deviation from commutative classical spacetime. This means that ordinary Lorentzian spacetime would arise as this parameter approaches zero. In simpler terms, as this deviation becomes negligible, we return to classical spacetime as we know it. Moreover, there might be a notion of quantum differential calculus on the quantum spacetime algebra, compatible with the quantum symmetry. Ideally, this would reduce to the usual differential calculus as the controlling parameter approaches zero. Why is this crucial? This would permit wave equations for particles and fields, facilitating predictions for experimental deviations from classical space-time physics that can then be tested experimentally. Lastly, the Lie algebra should be semi-simple. This characteristic makes it easier to formulate a finite theory. In our continuing exploration of the enigmatic nature of space-time, we now turn our attention to non-commutative extensions to space-time. While not strictly quantum space-time, as previously discussed, this concept offers another fascinating layer to our understanding. At the heart of this idea is the work of Alan Connors and his colleagues, who propose adding non-commutative extra dimensions at each point of ordinary space-time. Unlike the invisible, curled-up extra dimensions suggested by string theory, Connors' approach replaces the coordinate algebra of these extra dimensions with a finite dimensional non-commutative algebra. But why is this significant? For a certain reasonable choice of this algebra, its representation and the extended Dirac operator, one can remarkably recover the standard model of elementary particles. This means that the different kinds of matter particles we observe could be seen as manifestations of geometry in these non-commutative extra dimensions. Connors's pioneering work in this field dates back to 1989 and the theory has evolved considerably since then. 
What's even more intriguing is that this non-commutative geometry approach can theoretically be combined with the quantum space-time models we discussed earlier. Imagine a unified framework where quantum space-time and non-commutative extra dimensions coexist, potentially providing a more comprehensive understanding of the universe.